We got a package in the mail from Sonic Cake Petals, and we're gonna open it up and check them out. Let's get into it. So, here we go. Can I keep? Can I? Can I keep them all? Um, Skills. Do you see that? You see that? Caught it on tape. Got it. Got it. So Sonic Cake was really kind to send over some of these pedals to me to check out. I asked them for some very specific pedals that I think would do really well with the kind of content that I already make in that I'm always trying to make very budget friendly, compact gear that's really easy to travel with. You guys probably know by now that's the kind of stuff that I normally talk about stuff that you can go on tour with really easily and throw it in your backpack and it's kind of enough. Big rigs in a little tiny package. So with the idea in mind that I probably will build some kind of a very small fly out gig style pedal board rig with these little guys, I figured we're just gonna go with the basics of certain things that you need to get a typical metal tone. So of course, if there's anything high gain or metal, the first thing that we're gonna wanna get into is something of a noise suppressor. So I asked them for their noise wiper. So let's check this thing out and have a look at it. I really like Sonic Cake Taste it. Come on, bro. That's kind of that's kind of cool. But we open it up. So these things are basically, you know, these little compact, very very space efficient style pedals, you know, which I enjoy. And one thing I really love about these things is that they're all like this murdered out sort of, not really shiny black. I guess it's kind of shiny, but it's meant to be a bit. It's not certainly not gloss, you know. But they just they all look super mean like this. And right off the bat, you can feel when you pull one of these things out of the box, they've got some weight to it, you know what I mean? It's got a little chunk to it. It feels it feels like it's worth something. It's not plastic, it's all metal housing, and it's cool. The price is right on these things. They run for about between 40 to 100 bucks depending on which pedal you're buying, and that's pretty decent for a pedal that you might put on a really tiny pedal board and throw in your backpack for a fly out gig. Are these meant to be your main pedals? Maybe not, maybe so, it depends. I think that there's probably gonna be enough going on with these things that you could put them on your board and rely on them pretty well. Some of the other stuff that's in the box, these are pretty nice. So they have these cards that they set up where it's like little blueprints of the pedal and it breaks down all the different controls of the pedal, which is really cool. And I just think it's really kinda, you know, Tasty. It's a it's a tasty little detail. I think that this is really nice, and it just sort of gives you that blueprint style breakdown of what's going on with the pedal. And the last thing that comes in the box is probably, in my opinion, one of the coolest things that I've ever seen a pedal company do, and that's give you some 3M Velcro that's already custom cut to fit the bottom of the pedal so that it doesn't obstruct the screws. Not that you really need to open the pedal to get into it anyway, because there really shouldn't be any reason to open it. You can't put a battery in it. You need to power it with a power supply. But yet another tasty detail that these guys have thought about. So as for a first impression with just opening up a pedal, already I'm very impressed. You know, these things are really nice. And again, they're solid. All of the hardware seems to be pretty solid. You know, it doesn't feel flimsy. It doesn't feel like if you step on it once or twice, it's gonna break. Now, of course, this is a, a noise suppressor or a noise gate. Uh, I shouldn't need to step on it other than to turn it on. So it's not really like this pedal's gonna get a lot of traffic anyway. It should just be on, and then it just stays on the entire time. So that's one thing maybe to consider. But again, all the hardware feels pretty solid. It's true bypass, so when it's off, it's off, and it doesn't buffer any of your signals. So that's pretty nice. Two of the other pedals that I, I asked them for to kind of, again, make a bit of a small rig was their Blue Screamer, which is basically their take on like the classic Tube Screamer kind of overdrive. And then also their Shark pedal. Now this, if I'm not mistaken, is a bit of a preamp, similar to what some of the other companies make where they will put a preamp in a stop box a bit. But when I open this up, the controls kind of remind me of what you would find on the guitar versions of the Sanzamp pedals. So not the bass pedals, but the guitar pedals themselves, because there's like sort of a, a normal, modern, and then classic mode for the different tonality. 
Uh, but we're gonna check this out. We'll go through each one of them. I might actually do a full video on this. So if this is something that you're kind of interested in, let me know in the comments and we can dive into it deeper. The last two pedals that I asked them for are two that I'm the most excited about because I actually have a feeling that I will find real use case with my own rig with these two things. As I've mentioned in some previous videos, I am really like not a big fan of my amp having to be mic'd on stage, putting a microphone behind me because I'm gonna always kick it. I move around a lot, I'm flailing all over the place, and more often than not, I end up kicking my microphone. So I asked them to send me over two pedals that will work in conjunction with like my main rig. Now I'm gonna use them with these other pedals to make a really tiny rig, but I have a feeling that these will find their way into my main rig. The first of which is their very simple Sonic ABY, which is exactly that. It's an ABY switcher. So this is gonna allow me to have one signal going in, and then split that signal out to two other destinations. One might just be my effects return, because I have a feeling this will end up in my effects loop, and the other will be going over to the next pedal that I'm about to show you. This one really excites me, because as some might know, I have the Madman Music Nasty Cab IR that uh, I personally made, and I think that it came out really good. I use it in all of my virtual amp setups. Anything that requires an IR, I use it. But this pedal I'm really excited about. It's the Sonic Cake Sonic IR, and this is a cab loader. It comes with a bunch of standard kind of cabs already preloaded on there, but you can actually load your own on here, so you don't have to keep the ones that are here. There is a very specific way that you have to have the file name, but it's not so difficult, and they explain everything with the card that it comes with, as well as a breakdown of all the different cabs that come built into this thing. But the coolest feature about this pedal that I've not seen on other really small micro pedals is the fact that this has a full-blown XLR output, which is really great because if I do team this thing up with an ABY switch, I'm gonna come out of the one, send one signal back to the return on my amp, and then I can send the other signal to the IR and then out to front of house so that I don't have to mic my cabinet anymore. That's pretty sweet. Definitely gonna be giving a lot of information about these guys, so keep an eye out for that. Let's get these guys laid out and hear what they sound like. So once again, I really appreciate Sonic Cake for sending these pedals over to me. I am gonna do in-depth breakdowns of each of these pedals, so be sure to look out for that. Hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them below. I try to answer all of them. In the description, I've got some links where you can check out Sonic Cake stuff. So until next time, peace.